All right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. We're gonna start in, in a second here. I have to turn my video on. All right. Gonna wait a few seconds to let a few more participants join today's webinar. All right. Okay. Today we're going to talk about oh last last week there was the introduction to the power of digital storytelling. And this is webinar number two. We we're talking about writing for the web. And as we progress along the series, we're going to talk about development of other digital content, website creation, and more. But I always like to start off with writing for the web, which is the basis of most of your digital content. Now, here we're going to talk about the importance of website, but writing for the web is the primary focus. Now, it's a little bit different. It's not about uh, grammar. It's not about somewhat uh, application or platform introduction. This is other things you have to think about before you can start writing for the web before you even hit the first keystroke. Well, let's get started here. The digital storytelling series with PBS Western Reserve is for community partners and members and individuals that can learn the tools in creating digital content for effective digital storytelling. You will learn about digital content creation through website creation, video, audio, podcasts, and content strategies, and more. All right. If you have questions during the podcast, feel free, I mean, during the webinar, feel free to put it in a chat. Comments or questions. The topics that we're gonna to cover today cover stats on how people read and scan online content, content navigation behaviors and patterns of online use, how people read mobile content, how people use phones for different content, distractions and multitasking, writing tips and the inverted pyramid, which is a style of writing. Then we're gonna talk about the platforms that I suggest you can start with. Now we have a lot of slides to cover, but shortly here you will find in the chat a link to the actual PDF of this presentation so you can refer back to. And also at a later date, the video of this presentation will be on our YouTube channel. All right. <clears throat> Before you start writing content for the web, you have to understand the patterns and behaviors of online reading. Now, before we really get started, you really have to take a look at yourself and, and kind of observe how you read content online. And a lot of things I'm going to present will actually give you an aha moment, other things to think about. Actually, just you probably analyze how you're going to observe any kind of content on mobile phones or mobile devices. Now we're gonna get into how people read mobile content. Now, as we talk about this, the word mobile really means moving. A lot of the times when people are consuming content on their mobile phones, they are moving. You might be at a doctor's office, you might be riding a car with someone, you might be at work, you might be walking. Mobile simply means moving and you have to get that context in your mind as you are developing content. People are absorbing content most of the time on the move. Now, before we get into the crux of this, we're gonna have this little participatory question. Now, the question is, in today's digital movement, society, content consumption, in a chat box, put in there how long you think the average attention span is according to Microsoft. Is it 30 seconds, 45 seconds, or what have you? In the chat box, simply put how many seconds you think the average uh, average attention span is. All right, we got two seconds, we got 10 seconds, we got seven seconds, uh, 15 seconds, five, 45, 20, 15, five seconds, two minutes, <clears throat> 32 minutes. Now, with this being mobile, the attention span is really on on a mobile device. The answer is eight seconds. That is the average attention span on <clears throat> on mobile devices, not on desktop, 
but on mobile devices. So keep that in your mind when you are developing content. All right, reading on the web. Initially, people do not read but scan content on, on, the, on the mobile devices. I said on the web is mobile. They don't read, they scan. People scan 16 to 20% of written online content. Again, this is on mobile. People scan for what catches their attention. This could be headlines. Sometimes people will scan a story to see how many paragraphs it is before they even start reading or thinking about reading. Or they're looking at keywords or phrases that catch their attention or links. There's a lot of things people scan for. People scan like this, they scroll through social media. When you're scrolling through Facebook, uh, Twitter, or what have you, the way you scroll through those social media platforms is the way you read online content, written online content on mobile. You're looking for specific information, the keyword, trigger words, or what have you. A specific piece of information, and you need it quickly. So as soon as you find it, you might say, hey, here's the point that I'm trying, that I was looking for. That point that you're looking for will trigger you to actually read. So you're going to scan for that trigger word. We're going to talk about that a little later. Tension span eight seconds. So while, while you're writing content, now this is all before you start writing. You have eight to 12 seconds to catch someone's interest. And as, <clears throat> I'm going to show you different ways on how to do that. 55% of all page views get less than 15 seconds of attention. 8 to 12, 15 seconds is quick. People are on the move. You got a lot of other stuff coming at you. We're going to get into that a little later. When it comes to writing or words, two to three letter words are skipped 75% of the time, while eight letter words are focused on. Those are primarily made up of the keywords that will trigger you to engage the content. So two or three letter words are skipped. This is the aspect of how people scan. Again, people scan for what, well, for what catches their attention. Headlines, keywords, length of text, videos, and photos. A lot of times people will scan an article and look for the photo to see if it catches attention because people forget a picture is worth a thousand words. People scan for clear and concise messages. Clear and concise means short, short words, short paragraphs. We're going to get into that later. The more words on the page, the less they will read. Again, this is on mobile, not on desktop. People scan the length of an article before reading. Long paragraphs actually deter actual reading. And this last point, when people start writing for the web, they're writing for themselves. They're, they're actually, their interest is in more the content before the reader is. So people do not read like you think they do. You got to remember that. A lot of people might write some content, <clears throat> put a web page out. They're looking for the stats to see how many people have read it. And they might not get as many as they want. And you might get emotional about it. People do not read like you think they do. Or like you do not read like you do not like, don't read like you think. How did I say that? People do not read like you think you do. They don't think like you. They don't read like you do. When you're writing, they're not reading it as you wrote it. They're scanning it. Mobile phone users navigate content with their fingers in different ways. This is a primary aspect to dwell on. And as we go through this, <clears throat> we're going to have another question. Think about how you use your phone on the move, sitting down, or what have you. Here's some images on how people use their phones. While you're using your phone, you have a lot of smartphone interruptions. You can have calls, message notifications, social media badges and alerts. If you got Facebook, if you got Twitter, you get that little red dot on the icon that might pop, that might trigger you, trigger you to see who said what and what have you. You got music apps, videos, you got games. How you use your, your smartphone can affect the reading or scanning of content. Here's another pictorial of how people use their phones. There are also different tasks in this multitasking area may change the physical interaction with the phone. 
you might use a, uh, you might turn it horizontally to watch a video. You might turn it horizontally to send an email. You might use two thumbs to zoom in on the picture. You might tap some links. Take a look at the five images here and kind of garner how you use your mobile phone. Actually look at other people, how people engage it. You have to remember when you're writing for the web, how people use their phones. Basic ways of phone usage it can be one-handed, cradled, two-handed. Now here's the question. When reading content or a web article, how do you use your phone? Now in the chat box, you got the numbers here. You got the red one, the yellow is two, the blue three, the green four. Look at the images and in the chat box, place the number in which you find yourself using the phone most. Look at the images. When you look at the images, when you're using your phone, how do you use it, use it most? Is it two, two thumbs, one handed, one thumb, hold, tap, cradle, put numbers one, two, three, or four in the chat box. All right, one got a couple of ones, got a couple of twos, got threes, got fours, got ones, got threes, kind of a mixed. You got two most of the time. Two most of the two is really the position where most people are using it, especially where they're on the move. Three, you're sitting down, same thing with cradle, fingers or thumbs. I can't tell you what you be doing. <laughs> I really don't. I haven't really seen anyone use it that way unless they're uh, new to smartphone devices. Now we're going to go to this chart. We're still getting threes and twos. So it's a mix between two and three and a few ones. Same so saw a few, a few ones. All right. Again, you have to remember when you're writing content for the web, you got to think about how people engage it. Now, this next chart will show you, or should show you, and I'm going to walk you through it. Should show you how people engage with the content. So if you look at number, let's look at number two, which is the hand and thumb with the yellow one, the yellowish uh, one, one thumb aspect on it. If you look across the tap link, tap link, check box, tight, short scroll, long scroll, short scroll. Another aspect when reading content, people tend to scroll, like I said, how, many, how much text they have to read or what kind of pictures in it. And as you notice, the yellowish with the one thumb, number two, on the short scroll, you don't see too much short scrolling. People on the move. They, you got to catch them with that first headline with which we are talking to. If you look at all the charts, all the bars, when it comes to the yellowish number two, you, very, you rarely have too much scrolling. Short scrolling or long scrolling. You don't have too much of it. Tap links, you don't have too much activity because people are on the move. They're looking for that maybe one scroll, catch their attention, eight to 12 seconds, they on to the next, maybe shorter than that. So that's something to think about. Now, here's another question. When it comes to writing on the web, you have to think about the average person. In the chat box, what do you think is the average reading level of Americans. College, high school, first grade, second grade. You could put one K-12 in the chat box. What do you think the average reading level of most Americans are? Fourth, sixth, you got eighth grade, high school, ninth grade, fifth grade, eighth grade, middle school. All right, we got pretty much people have an idea. Now, my background is in uh, journalism, and we were taught to write in a way that a fourth or fifth grader can comprehend it. But for most studies, the answer is seventh to eighth grade. And we're going to get into that, into that philosophy and the reading, readability test that determines this, that will help you write better content. Now, when it comes to writing for re, writing for seventh grade reading level, it's not really about the competition of each person. It's about the speed of the reading, which is done in the headlines, which is done in this inverted pyramid we'll get into later. Readability. The average American reads at the seventh to eighth grade level. This is about a literacy project. 
The Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development found that 50% of U.S. adults can't read a book written at an eighth grade level. So think about this. If they can't read a book, how are they going to read a post? Think about that. And this is by the Washington Post 2016. Readability. Readability is the ease with which text can be read and understood. Knowing the reading level of your text can give you a general idea of how many people may be able to read it. Text intended for readership by the general public, general public, not for everybody. Now it depends on your audience. It really depends on your audience. Should aim for a grade level of around eight schooling age 13 to 14. Having a readable website with engaging content is a boost for any organization and increases engagement. Content with high engagement has many benefits, including decreasing bounce rate and increasing time on site. Bounce meaning they're leaving your site. If with digesting mobile content, mobile digital content, that attention span, if you have to think too much on some words or the initial paragraph, people will bounce, mean leave. So you have to catch the catch the interest within eight to 12 seconds, short words and sentences, which we'll get in a little later. This also makes the reader want to share your content. Now, there's another part I didn't put in here, but most people have conversations on the same reading level. Readers will go further into your site the way it depends on your formatting and the language that you're using, especially if it's quick. All right. So there's a Fleisch Kincaid readability test. This is what all this is based on. Again, if you go to uh, PBS Western Reserve website under education, digital storytelling, you will find this PDF. And we're going to post that short link to the PDF within the chat so you can have access to it. Now, this is the readability test that newspapers, marketing, or what have you has been based on. And actually, one of the most famous book books that this readability test was based on is The Cat in the Hat, Dr. Seuss. The Fleisch Kincaid readability test is a widely used formula which determines the reading level of a text. It is effective for writing copy for your website, advertising for your product. Think about it. When you see advertising, list, actually listen to the language in it. It doesn't require too much thinking. You pretty much get it off the gist because they write in a simplistic fashion. It also boosts your SEO performance, which is search engine op optimization. If you use short words or words that come to mind, come to mind while people are searching, and most of the time is on that lower grade level, this improves the chance of your content being found on the internet. Again, this is used by marketers, research communication or communicators, and others to measure the readability of text. Text. <clears throat> The Fleisch Kincaid readability test scores are based on sentence length or the average number of words in a sentence. Keep it short, short, small words, short sentences. And I'm going to give you tips on that in later slides. Word length or the average number of syllables in a word. You really have to really think hard on it, read it out loud. Matter of fact, there's a readability test plug in, in Microsoft Word that will help you do this. The average length of a sentence has, this, has decreased with time as well as our intention span. Again, the average length of a sentence has decreased with time as well as our attention span. Think about that. Eight seconds, how long should the sentence be? All right, here's another aspect of writing content for mobile devices on the web. Distractions and multitasking. Videos and photos are more popular among mobile phone users because it's quick to digest on the movie. We don't have to read as much. That's one aspect of the popularity in that. All right. What's the next one? More likely to be interrupted by text messages, FaceTime requests, social media alerts, phone alerts, you name it, you, you should be getting it, getting it. Calendar events. And what have you meeting notes i use a lot of stuff my sub my phone is always going off users could be in different environments or on the move i keep repeating a lot of this thing keep repeating a lot of these sentiments because you have to think about this when you're writing content for mobile devices 
locations can present emotional distractions. Um, I have friends who might try to read my article while at a baseball game or again at the doctor's office, but at the doctor's office, people, norm, blood pressure normally goes up and they have other thoughts in their head. Under It's divided attention, which they don't get the crux of really what's being read. You never know how people are reading your content. Automobiles, airports, and more. Smartphones are connected to the lives of many. Morning routines from checking news and more. I actually listen to NPR radio in the morning. I really don't read the articles. I just listen to it. Checking reminders, to-do lists, calendars, alarms when you're waking up. Again, divided attention. You got to think about all this before you're actually writing, before you start writing. Now we're going to get into writing tips. All right. Once again, this is a, uh, let me see if it's, the link is in the chat. Okay. Again, feel free to drop any questions or comments in the chat box as I'm going along. All right. Writing tips before the first keystroke. Who are you talking to? Who is this for? Know your audience. Before you start, writing ask the following questions who is my primary audience what about a secondary audience these are the people that your primary audience may share this with or may not be connected to you why is your content important to your audience now we're going to talk about with this inverted pyramid how you determine what's important and really de deliver the first point in their reading what keywords would you use in sharing your information so the key words is really common language. What your audience recognize certain words and you speak in those certain words. Those are key words. If you talk and identify, connect with your audience with the same language, i.e. common language and keywords, the greater the chance of them reading your content and getting past that eight to 12 seconds. What would get them to share your content? Now, the next question is really, Rhetoric or just think about it. How many times have you shared an article just from reading the first few lines? Five times, 10 times, 50% of the time, 90% of the time. How many times have you shared an article? You have to think about that as you're writing content. Because your habits actually are not what you think they are until you start analyzing yourself. Facebook is king of that. You see a headline with a picture and you share it, you comment. How many people, how many times have you actually seen an article on Facebook and dove in to start reading it? Did you share it before you start reading it? Did you start reading and stopped? You have to think about all this while you're writing content. You have to be, you have to be really critical on engage, how your engagement looks before you start writing. All right, here is the inverted pyramid. You will see this style of writing primarily in journalism. You might see it in marketing. What is the inverted pyramid? Write your content like an upside down pyramid. When you're writing content, there's a reason why you're writing it. There's a point you're trying to get across. Put that down first. What is it that people need to get out this article? What's the most important aspect? Put that first. You have to think about, okay, People on the move, you got eight seconds, you got 12 seconds to catch their attention. And if you start with anything other than the importance of that thing, you might lose them. They might not get to the most important point of your article. You start with the most important information first. And at first, we may call it lead in an article, two to three sentences or a short paragraph. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of tips with the two or three sentences. Two or three sentences should be on the five to 10 words. A short paragraph should be two sentences. Now you gotta remember two sentences on a document, even in Word or on paper, it's not that much, but when you squeeze it on mobile, it might look like a full paragraph. And I got a slide a little later to show you those actual numbers. I'm gonna come back to this. Rank your secondary information first or whatever explains the main point. You start out with what was most was most important, then what backs that up. 
sometimes your conversations may lead off in that, depending on how you're talking. If you're having conversation conversation out on the street, out in the building with someone, look at how you talk. If you have to be in a meeting, you got you only got five sentences, five minutes to talk, or maybe two. You always start with the most important aspect first, and then you explain it. That's the inverted pyramid. Web readers have short attention spans and will determine their interest in seconds. You got to grab it first. That's why you got to present the most important information first, quick and short. Readers can determine if they want to read your entire article. Readers can start reading at any point and still get the intended information. That's why it's so important to get that information first. You got to remember on, on the way you position your, somebody might use a hand, one handed, one thumb scroll. You might just have your thumb ready to hit their first scroll, maybe two scrolls before they're out, but their first paragraph will not require them to scroll. You have to think about that. Reduces need for longer text and read time. You might have seen some articles, some websites have started doing this. They will show an article and then in the corner of the web page somewhere will say, hey, this will only take you two minutes to read. Or this is a four minute read or 30 second read. You have to think about when you're on the move, how much time do you actually spend or would you spend reading an article? Minute, two minutes before you're on to the next one. Is it 20 seconds and you share it? You have to think about all this. So, the, so inverted pyramid benefits reduces the need for longer text and read time. It encourages scrolling. If you keep chunks of text, i.e. a double space between each one while you're writing for the web, it encourages scrolling. Get to, inverted pyramid also benefits getting to the point and supports all types of readers. Now, here's some aspects of the pyramid. You got the lead. This is the what, where, when, and how, and who of the story. This is the hook to get the audience to keep reading, even on the key or to share it. It's to hook them, read them, share it, or hook them, share it, read them, however you want to say it. But the lead is the very the most important aspect of your article. That's what you start with. You got the body. This is a supporting, this is the supporting information of the lead back with more detail. You got to back it up. You got your point, here's your evidence, supporting information or what have you. Now I see in the group, it says, I'd like to read the whole article first, but I'd like to tell the person I'm sharing with why I thought they would like it. With that in the chat box, that's what most people do. That, well, some people may do it. They'll go read it and find that most important chunk. And when they go have a conversation in it, then you talk in the inverted pyramid you uh, put the most important aspect of the story first. All right. Includes photo. Well, you can add photos to your, to your body. So the body contains a photo or video, what have you, or audio to enhance written text and engagement. You have to tell, you got extra information. This is any additional information or extra content such as links, other sources or earning readers to share or other call to actions. When you're adding a link, it might provide you extra credibility to what you're writing, depending on what you're writing. Uh, when you add that credibility, that urge other readers to share. So you have this aspect of you have fake news and also have, you also have in, uh, insufficient news. Somebody might make a point, may have an article, but you still want some evidence. Who else has said this? Or what have you. But so this is that's the urging aspect of it. Somebody might see, oh, it's a link in it. They might not even click on it. They see a link. Oh, they got it backed up by somebody else and share this article. All right. All of this at this point is keeping it simple. Here's some tips on how to keep it simple. Keep written content clear and simple. Use active and common active voice and common language. Strong, direct, and clear tone. Use the same words and phrases your audience does, hence common language in the first point. You can also use these words as keywords for search engine optimization, which is also metadata, depends on who, uh, could be tags. You can use them in tags as well, keywords, tags, metadata, 
when you're writing your web content, especially if you want people to find your your website, your articles. All right. Avoid abbreviations that require somebody to think. The less thinking, the more engagement, quicker the comprehension, but it, abbreviations will stall them up. Say, okay, what is this full of acronyms? A lot of organizations use a lot of acronyms. Avoid that. Spell it out for them. Keep it simple. Avoid repetition. Now, I say that and when you're writing web content, but I do it in these webinars to drive the point home. <laughs> So avoid rep repetition. All right, you have paragraphs, sentences, and lists. These are formatting techniques to help you break up the content to into chunks to make or urge people to read, to follow along. This is about the inverted pyramid. Put the most important content in the first paragraph. Keep sentences and paragraphs short. Two to three sentences per paragraph. A paragraph should consist of 70 words or less. Now, again, you might have some writers out here uh, who, if you're long winded in conversations, good chance you could be uh, long writers <laughs> or long winded in writing. And it's hard for people to write short paragraphs in chunks because most of us don't speak that way. But this is how you have to practice to get information out effectively and quickly. Choose lists over long paragraphs. This means bulleted list. Use lists to make your content easier to scan. That's what it does. Choose a list. Instead of a long paragraph, you might have full points and just write short sentences beside each bullet, which bullet will is easier to read, is easier to scan and people can pick up on it, which will urge them to keep reading. Now, another aspect is headlines. Now, headlines, you don't have to be, you don't have to think too hard on headlines. Think about the most important point that you want to make from this article and use the common language and use the common words in that headline. A lot of people get stuck on what the headline should be. Everything within writing an article should be short, including headlines, because in this case, headlines should communicate what the article is about. Most of the time when, you, when there's something going on, even when people are talking, they don't really spew out a long sentence when they're talking or sharing a story. It's normally quick. Headlines, headings and subheadlines allow or should be subheadings within the context of your article, allow readers to navigate content. So if you have the headline, first paragraph, which is the lead, then you have a, a small heading. So the headings would divide, it, divide your content up. So if you see the headings, you can scan to the major point that you are looking for anyway. It helps you get navigate to that quick point that you wanna make. Choose a word or a phrase from the paragraphs that will make the reader want to keep reading. Again, you have to echo the language of the people reading it. Whatever the important aspect of it is, the words that you're using should be in your headline, should be in your first paragraph, should be kind of included in your paragraph throughout to keep that point, that major point echoed to the reader. Use short and direct headlines and subheadlines. I've said it a few times. Use sub headlines to clearly describe the content in each paragraph so people can jump to it. Like, it's almost like a bookmark within your text. Hey, where is this at? If you scan it with one thumb, you can actually scan real quick and the headlines will pop out and you can jump to that one paragraph that helps that with that, that one thumb scroll. It also helps divide long text into shorter text blocks. Again, if you have a lot of text, you need to divide it up in chunks so people can follow it quickly while they're using mobile devices. All right. Suggested word count in writing for the web. Now, again, I'm gonna pause a quick second. If you go to pbswesternreserve.org, on the education, on the education tab, you'll find digital storytelling webinars. You will find this uh, webinar, previous one on YouTube, and the PDF to this one. 
Here, suggested word count and writing for the web. Headlines, eight to 10 words or less. Sentences, 15 to 20 words, but the shorter, the better. I actually put a little extra on that. The shorter, the better. Paragraphs, 40 to 70 words. Now, I'm going to give you a side note. I don't have it in the presentation. When you're writing for the web, depending on the platform, which we're going to get to here in a second, if you hit Control-Shift-M on Firefox, your screen will reduce to a, to, uh, a sample mobile size that will show you how your text looks before you publish it on a mobile phone. That's control the control shift M on Firefox to make it go mobile and to go back to full screen. That's just a side note. Let me go back just to repeat this. Headlines, eight to 10 words or less. Sentences, 15 to 20 words. Paragraphs, 40 to 70 words. Now we're gonna to get to formatting. Now, a lot of people may have certain techniques and styles when they're writing in general in word and what have you. And you have to drop a lot of those habits when you're writing for the web because it can deter people digesting your information, digesting meaning reading. Formatting. Don't bold, italicize, or use indents, indents unnecessarily. Typically in, in writing, long form, a lot of people use bold, italicize, or whatever, but bold should only be using the main keyword that you want to carry throughout your article. A tile size is a little bit better because if you have bold, people can scan for it, but you have too many bolds, bold words or bolded sentences or what have you, it can make the reading this drawing and people will bounce, I mean leave your bounce rate. Uh, attention span, they're scanning for it. And if they see certain words bolded that doesn't pertain to them, they will leave. So don't do a lot of this. They can handle scanning, scanning. Don't underline. Underlining content is reserved, reserved for links. Sometimes in some websites, some web formats, hyperlinks are underlined and sometimes they're not. Sometimes hyperlinks are in bold or italicized and maybe of a different color. So don't underline. Use proper font sizes for your list and sub headlines. You're really looking at size 12 to 16. 12 is pushing it. 16 is where you should start at, especially for the web. It's pretty big for long form in Word. But in mobile development, start off at 16 the better. Don't use colors. Keep everything black and white. Now, again, like I said, the hyperlinks, they will more than likely be in color. Uh, more so than anything else. And they might be even underlined. So don't color, don't color. Oh, here, here's the most important stuff. What you deem may be important may not be as important to the reader and don't add any extra effects. Not like colors. Avoid all caps. That also will stall up a reader. If they scan it, they'll see a word. They see a word that doesn't pertain to them that can instantly turn them off. Some people might use a combination of all this. Bold, underline, small. It might be too small font to read, maybe too big might have color in it, it might be all cap. That's the number one thing that will, that will truly eliminate it. Think about it. If you're reading and you see anything in bold and color and what have you, what are your, what action would you take? Would you continue reading? Would you jump to something else? And why are you even thinking about it? If, and think about this again, eight second time, eight second attention span, you're reading, you're trying to determine if you're gonna read it. Next thing you know, you get a calendar event pop up. On my iPhone, I might be watching the video then uh, I might get an article, I might check it out in my email, but I found my video still floating on my screen. I might not even read it. Uh, the, the, my attention is divided. If I see something all caps personally for me, that's an instant turn off. Next. So you have to keep all this in, in consideration when you're writing for the web. Now this is the number one killer. Avoid multiple punctuation marks. The more exclamation points don't make it more important. The more question marks don't make it more inquisitive. It don't make it, oh, you really have to do this. A lot of people do this. Ask yourself while you're reading, if you saw someone with multiple exclamation points or question marks, what would you do? 
So I'm going to pause right here. Looking at these formats, take a minute to get the list and put in the chat box which feature or formatting of text will turn you off or deter you from reading, continue reading the article. Is it bolding? Is it italicized? Is it indent? Is it underlining? Small font? Coloring? What turns you off with bad formatting? You say all caps, all fun, fun fonts. Yes, that's a good one. Didn't have that on the list. All caps, too small. A lot of organizations, they will, Ms. Diana put the multiple uh, punctuation marks, all caps. A lot of organizations, they will develop a lot of content, put it online, and the text is too small. It's too small. They don't, they don't think about it. You have to have large fonts. If you have, you have, you don't want to be too big. You want to be just right. Enough to say, okay, if a uh, sentence may be uh, cut and they continue to scroll in, but you don't want it too big, that really will turn somebody off. So you got to find that just right. Like I said, that control shift M on Firefox, if you're writing on the WordPress or the other formats, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it to you in a minute. Control, control shift M will show you how to look on the phone and you can determine if it's big or too small. All right. You got a lot of small fonts, all caps, and what have you. Alarming punctuation marks. All right. I'm over to this next one. Platforms. Now, WordPress is the most customizable blog platform out of most of them. Uh, they have a free version and they have, you have to go through a hosted site. Either I go with GoDaddy. Um, WordPress is the most utilized platform in the world. Uh, I have other people that may have used Wix. It's to your choosing. Uh, when I taught at taught in college, kids would ask about Wix. And what I would tell them, if they, if they were looking for a job, if you saw a listing for someone to maintain a website, are they asking for Wix or are they asking for WordPress? Most of the time, when you see the word CMS, this is just a side note for you. CMS, which is also known as Content Management System. If somebody's looking for a job or, or whoever, you see those words. 75% of the time, they're talking about something similar, if not WordPress. CMS, WordPress. I used to ask my student, uh, do you think WordPress is important? A lot of them like, oh, no, 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 because WordPress is quote unquote not so cool, like Wix has portrayed itself to be. And then I would ask them, do you think CMS is important to your career? And they say, oh, yes, all the hands go up. Then I would tell them, did you know that WordPress is the number one CMS platform in the world? Aha moment kicks in. So number one, I start with WordPress. You can find some nice templates. There's a lot of training platforms. Easy to use once you get it down. One of my keys that I tell people is if you can understand Microsoft Word, you can work WordPress. All right. You have Medium. It's the best for building an audience. A lot of publishing platforms have gone to Medium, i.e. Medium.com. Now, Medium.com uh, also has, once you get an audience, also has a feature in there where you can start, start generating revenue. You have to read into it. Medium is a very nice platform. It's easy, accessible, easy to share. So go check out Medium.com. You got LinkedIn. And these are the people who are in business. You can actually write a LinkedIn article and share it outside of LinkedIn. It, not, it does not necessarily have to mean you share it with the people only on LinkedIn. Now you have to think about it. If you have an article on Medium, you have an article on LinkedIn, no matter who your audience, audience is, you have credibility because you're on these notable platforms. Now Medium and LinkedIn, it's not as it's not you just have multiple articles, multiple multiple articles under a brand name or brand or 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 what have you. It's not necessarily maintaining a website. 
But WordPress is. Medium and LinkedIn is not. And this is all about blogging. Then you also have for business, businesses, you have Squarespace and Weebly, depending on who you're trying to reach. Now, if you're trying to reach community and you're getting ready to do more than just writing content and having photos, I would suggest Medium to start with that. But you can also go to WordPress. Now, on a side note, when you engage your interface to start adding text and pictures and videos and what have you, if you're if you're knowledgeable to WordPress, the same platform or user interface you will see is very similar to WordPress, Medium, and LinkedIn. Now, Facebook also has a section called Articles. Side, another side tip: if you have all this context, you want to put them on link. You want to put all this information on Medium. You can do it on Medium and WordPress and Facebook because those those platforms are very similar when publishing text. A lot of times you can just copy and paste it. I've done that with WordPress and I've done that with Medium and LinkedIn. I, I wrote something in Medium, copied and pasted it in LinkedIn, fit right in. Maybe minor adjustment, but it's the same similar platform. All right. So now I've reached the end to, of this presentation. And again, if you can actually, you can scan this QR code and it will take you to PBS Western Reserve forward slash digital storytelling. If you need any other resources or questions or anything else pertaining to digital content before the uh, upcoming webinars or previous ones, you can email me at F Barrett, Fred Barrett at F Barrett at pbswestreserve.com. You can skew, uh, can the QR code to take it to the page. Again, what is the previous uh, webinar is, on, is also on YouTube, is also on this web page, and the PDF to this presentation. The next webinar is Graphic and Photo Basics, which will be Wednesday, April 28th. Same time, same platform, Zoom. You can scan this QR code, which will send you to the next registration for the next webinar. Now I'm gonna take a minute here in the chat box and take a minute to, if anybody has any questions before this webinar comes to an end, or if you want me to go back to a certain topic, feel free to do so in the chat box. So you can submit a question in the chat box. And let me see. All right, thank you, Rich. I know I went. To, I knew I kind of went through that kind of quickly. Like I said, I had a lot of slides, and now there's a PDF. And actually, if you're in the chat box, here's the the short link for the PDF directly to the PDF. Uh, Bernadette, I just sent you that there's a link, there's a link you can click. It should take you to the PDF, which is on the website. Now, as you went through this webinar, is there any, any certain things that you did not know when preparing for writing for the web or things that stood out? Also put that in the chat. Thank you, Mike. Send again, eight second attention span. Yep. Now I've worked in marketing uh, for a few years and I had to design billboards and then billboards on the highway. We would I always practice the way of design a billboard that would get the information to you within five seconds. So there's a lot of things that you really have to take a look at. So, okay, did this hold, how long did I hold? How long did this hold the attention? Five seconds, three seconds, two seconds. Just like in a song, even in music, they will say you got to catch the interest within the first ten seconds within the beat. So there's a lot of lot of lot of marketing aspects to this. It's about the attention span. 
And again, attention span for people reading contents on mobile, on mobile phones, smartphones. Totally different on desktop. When you go to desktop, it's an, it's intent. And we just uh, put the link back to the, the short link. We'll just take you to PDF on the website. And be sure to register for the next webinar for photo and basics, photographic and photo basics, which I will show you how the photos can add to your written content. Thank you, Brand. Actually, um, when I was in sports marketing, there was a certain lingo that we wrote in. And, and once I got into news writing under my undergrad, it changed how I wrote. People just loved how I wrote because I simplified everything. You're welcome, Taylor. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Dave. And again, if you go to YouTube and just search PBS Western Reserve, you will find our YouTube channel with other videos, but we do have uh, the previous presentation up and this will be up shortly, the next few days, I will say. You're welcome, Diana. Thank you, Sally. Hopefully you all, are, hopefully you all will join the next webinar. And I do, I do, uh, those who did not see the first one, I would suggest go back to watching the first one on a power digital storytelling. And there's a link to the page on our website. Well, all of the materials, all the presentation we will do, we will do will be at this link. So as you're going through this journey with us with digital storytelling, um, I suggest bookmarking this link at pbswesternreserve.org digital storytelling. And feel free to share the webinars and information with others as well. We will greatly appreciate it. Now, someone uh, mentioned about the inverted pyramid. The inverted py pyramid will work with any style of writing. Well, it's it's not scholarly writing. You can try to marketing, try to work. There's ha aspects of writing on the web. If you think about it, writing for the web is for people really on the move. But think about it, you might be in an office setting where people may not have a lot of time to read a certain thing. The quicker to read, the better it might, might be better for the person reading it. We just posted a link to the first webinar on digital power, digital storytelling. All right, if there are any, not any other questions and um, also, feel free to email me if you'd like a PDF to the previous presentation. We can, we can put that up. So if there's no other questions or no comments or what have you, uh, sign up for the next webinar, uh, fill out our survey, and we will end this webinar very shortly. Is there a book on basics? There are a lot of books on basic, basics. If you email me, I'm at F. Barrett at PBS Western Reserve. Let me go back. If you email me, I will send you a few references, Bernadette. All right, Brian, we'll put that PDF for the last slides. And also, Brian, uh, if you can email me, I'll, I will uh, send you a link to the PDF. Or we'll just have it up probably to, within, within the next couple of days. All right. Okay, we'll be closing out in the next minute. Again, uh, feel free to register for the next one. Uh, visit our website for the PDF and the uh, previous presentations, and and hopefully you will have a good day. Hopefully you learn something, <laughs> something that you can use. <laughs>